Hi, this is Nicole Roberts Jones, and welcome to Amplify Your Brilliance. What I know for sure is that one of life's greatest gifts will meet you when you go after your more. And so here is where I share with you thought provoking insight and behind the curtain conversations with women who have reached the pinnacle of success because they went after their more. And I really want you to get this. One idea from these episodes can make a remarkable difference, not just in your business, your career, but in your life. Also, make sure you join the conversation in our Facebook group. Go to thebrilliancetribe.com. Now grab your pen as we begin today's session of Amplify Your Brilliance. Hello and welcome to this episode. Today I'm excited to bring to you Miss Elaine Fluker. Now, Elaine, after working in media as a journalist for more than 20 years, she launched a business that is firmly planted in the notion of women supporting women, particularly along the entrepreneurial journey. She found her sweet spot doing the work she loves and what she does best, as she coins it, a blend of personal development and personal branding. And she is now also the host of the Support is Sexy podcast featuring interviews with more than 500 diverse women entrepreneurs and the author of her soon to be released book, Get Over I Got It. Ladies, please welcome Elaine. Hey, lady. Yay. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited. You know, the thing that I really admire about you is the fact that you really are a proponent for support. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amen. That's right. Support is sexy. I had to learn that the hard way, though. And and don't we all if we ever learn it, because some people never learn, learn it. it. Right. That's right. So how yep. did you even come into this place and, and really begin to say yes to standing in that gap? You know what? I did this personal development workshop in 2015 called Momentum. Mm -hmm. Um, They have it in New York. I think it's California. They're definitely L.A. to maybe D.C., some other places. And within that workshop, there were all it was in New York, all these people who were, you know, captains of their industry, leaders in their field. And then, you know, New Yorkers, that whole aggressive thing. So (laughs) but seeing in all of them, there were two things that were hardest for all of us to ask for. I say love and support. Mm -hmm. And when I say hard, Nicole, I mean, like, boo who crying. Don't Mm -hmm. make me do it. I don't want to ask for it kind of hard. And I didn't realize until I saw it, you know, how you see a reflection of yourself in someone else right? until I saw it in all of them and realized in myself how much I had that kind of reaction to asking for support. Now, when Mm. you think about it, it might sound ridiculous, but when you really sit back and think, am I someone who pushes support away and who says, I got it without even thinking about it. So Mm. that's where the book idea comes from. Which I love. Get over. I got it. I got it. I love that. Get over. I got it. it, Right. It's just like, (laughs) I got it. It's okay. I got it. And we don't even think about it. Mm. So I I just be committed to becoming more conscious of this idea of asking for support. And I said, okay, support is sexy. I'm going to see support is sexy, support is sexy. Mm. So I would say it to myself as a mantra. And when I started saying it to other women, when of course we have these conversations about girl, I'm so overwhelmed, I'm stressed, I'm this, I'm that. I was like, remember support is sexy. And I would see them light up like, Oh, I like that. Okay. Mm. I'm going to remember that. Look, or, and that's- or you give them permission to ask for help because sometimes we know we need it, but we, we feel like, and, and I'm going to say this and I don't know, I haven't quite, I haven't researched this, so this could be absolutely wrong. But I feel like this is somewhere in us, especially for black women, it's slave especially. mentality. Slave mm-hmm. mentality where we we couldn't tell anybody else we needed help because we like to right. get beat or you had sold to do it. or right. We had to figure it out. We had to figure it out. And I would say, mm-hmm. like you said, if we have a we don't necessarily want to ask, but sometimes the hardest part is accepting support. So for mm-hmm. a lot of us now, like then, as you said, we, you know, we had to do it. We were on our own. You would, you could get killed for asking for anything. Right. Now, the even if the support is there, most of us. We're doing it on our own. We don't even see it or we won't even allow it. Right. Mm. It's usually three reasons that we say I got it or don't want support. We're either defiant, defensive or defeated. Ooh, girl, hold on. I can't write that fast. Defiant, <laughs> defensive defiant or defeated. Hmm. Right. So defiant is just a sort of a, how dare you ask me if I need support? I'm the you know CEO of so and so. I'm the entrepreneur. I'm this. I'm that. I, I got this or mm-hmm. defensive. You feel like maybe someone's offering it to you because they don't believe you can handle whatever it is. And there are reasons for this. Right. For mm-hmm. as women overall and certainly as black women, we've been told that we well, even just look at equal pay. We still don't get paid as much as certainly as men, even as much as white women. So there are reasons to be defensive if someone says, oh, can I help you with that project at work? You think, no, 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 I got it because you're defensive and fearful and then defeated. As we said, there are times when we feel like, well, damn, I'm the only one who's going to get it. So I guess I got it. 
right? Mm. So it's usually those, Ooh. we have different reasons for feeling like that, but still nonetheless, it's why we not even don't ask for support, but why we push it away. Ooh, okay. So let me out myself right now because you know, you're stepping <laughs> Ooh, all on my toes, right? <laughs> so, so I already know I have defensive, right? And mm-hmm. and and it's interesting that this is coming up because a couple of weeks ago, so my husband is, and this I'm about to really out myself, and I'm doing this because maybe this will bless somebody. And mm-hmm. by the way, as you hear her and listening to Elaine, I want you to to go in our Facebook group, the Brains Tribe dot com, and and out yourself. Are you defiant, defensive, or defeated? Don't make me feel like I'm by myself out, right. out, 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 out <laughs> myself by myself. You're so not. anyway, so. So a couple of weeks ago, my husband is executive vice president of sales for a uh, fortune, who knows, 100 company, I don't even know. But he travels throughout the world sell, doing sales. And so I am creating my end of the year strategy. And my husband, I call him my see no no, hope he can't hear me because you guys know we at home COVID and he's here and he can probably hear me. But anyway, <laughs> so, so, so creating my end of the year strategy, he wants to walk through it. And it's like I had a revelation in the middle of us beginning to because as a first of all, when in, men and women communicate differently. And as he's telling me what I should do, I realize I'm getting defensive because mm-hmm. I'm fighting it. And then I, I said to myself, why? I, it's like I had an out of body experience. I asked him, why did you make that recommendation? So then I realized as he is explained to me that he's, you know, trying to figure out what I'm doing. See, women would say, tell me what you're already doing. Men don't do that. They just are telling you what to do. Mm-hmm. And it's coming from the same place, though. And it made me want to show him that I know what I'm doing because I thought for a long time he didn't know what I was doing. And so we had this full on. He wasn't crying, but I was. We had this full on kumbaya moment because I realized the disconnection that was having what happening, which, again, comes from love and support. Y'all, I thought he wasn't supporting me. He wanted to support me. And so his place was coming from a place of support. I'm thinking he's coming from a place of non-support. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and that, I realize every time we have an argument about my business, I that same we hit that same bump in the road, and he's trying to be helpful, and I'm thinking he's trying to condemn me, and he's not. And there are reasons that you might feel that way. Maybe there are some mm-hmm. things in the past where someone has been Ooh, yes. trying to create right there. There, that's why I mean it's like <laughs> the three reasons. Don't blame yourself mm-hmm. or her, but you do have to recognize it because thank God for you, you're able to communicate that with your husband. But think of how many relationships for some of this this might ruin. Whether it's at work, whether it's you know of a. a romantic relationship, relationship with your children, because you're feeling defensive, defiant, or defeated, and it impacts you and you're not aware of it. So at least pausing, and even if you don't stop feeling that way, at least the awareness of it, like, okay, I'm being defensive right now. Here I go again with my adorable self. And then you move on and you make a different, right? And, and you it's make so a different good. choice. Look, right. Look, I'm having my own counseling sh- session with Elaine, so you guys get to listen in. So so what's interesting <laughs> is is it and it didn't I didn't intend for this to happen, but what's interesting is it was like in that moment when I was being defensive yet again, it's like I had a light bulb moment that as a child, every time I wanted to do something, my mother, who from not because she meant to be this way, from lack of experience, would just shoot it down. She mm-hmm. would never ask me about it. She would just say, No, you can't do it. It's like, well, yeah. can I explain? Mm -hmm. And so I realized in that moment that I was putting that hat on my husband. That's right. And I said, oh, my God. And I said to him, anytime you feel me being like that, can you stop and let's tease it out? I said it won't happen always. But I realized I'm bringing my five year old self into this conversation. And that is why. I'm, I'm getting defensive. Now, here is the thing, you guys. Anytime I'm with someone else, I don't get like that. But because I'm at home with family, hello, someone which is what it was. You. Yep. Right. Which, is, which it was triggering it. And so I'm sharing that because I love that you said you've got to get underneath it. It was my job been married for 14 years. So this ain't the first time we have had this moment. OK, mm-hmm. we've been doing it for 14 years. So it, it took me 14 years to have this epiphany. It was in the middle of it. I was like, oh, oh my God. And he's looking at me like, what? Are we just like having a <laughs> right. full-on argument and you getting excited? I realized that was happening. And so thank you for that. And so I really want you guys to stop in a, for this moment, because here's the other thing I know, Elaine, is if you don't get the help you need. First of all, God meant you meant for you to do it by yourself. Your butt would be here by yourself on, That's on right. the earth. <laughs> That's right. We are all connected. If 2020 did not teach us anything, whether we right. to believe it or not, we are all as human beings more connected than we ever imagined. Mm, it's just that's so good. Right. We just need to, to support each other, show up for each other. And there's no there is no independence. That's a, that's a myth. This idea of independence. I even say with self me when people say someone so is self me. That doesn't mean they did it all by their damn self. 
Right. You know, Hello. even the most self-made people talk about, and I had support and I had this person, I had that person and my team and this and that. It's mm-hmm. just this myth that we've been creating. And I think social media uh, too has perpetuated this idea of I did this by myself. I did this accomplishment, et cetera. Whether the person is actually projecting that or we are receiving it in that way. Right. There's this myth out there, but yeah. And I think, I mean, thank you so much for sharing with the, the journey with you and your husband, because it's so powerful. Like we said, to, to recognize it, to think mm-hmm. back, where might this come from? So like you said, childhood, making the connection. This is because this is a person that loves me. This is someone who whose approval you want because you love them, you know, which makes mm-hmm. sense. Your mother, your husband, all these, my parents the same way, but, and then with them too, it helped me understand them more because I'm, my parents are in their nineties. They grew up in Alabama in the 1930s. They were born in 1929. So as we said earlier, even about slavery or that time period of Jim Crow, where you didn't go out on a limb and risk and do all these things. You got a good job. You were Mm -hmm. quiet. You So then if your daughter or whoever comes along saying, I got this idea, I'm going to do whatever. It's like, you can't do that. Don't you do that? Because they want to keep you safe. It's Mm -hmm. not because they want to hold you back. So it helps. I think you understand the other person better. Same with your husband. This Mm -hmm. is the way he communicates. He's not telling you this to defeat you or make you feel like you can't do it. He's trying to share actually to move you forward. Right. So, yeah. So it's really it's a lot of unpacking there. Right. And which is, you know, even this conversation we're having here is why I absolutely love your podcast because you. it's, 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 it gives, and this is the kind of stuff that happens on our podcast. So if y'all not listening, I'm just saying you need to be t- tuning in. So right. <laughs> again, the support is sexy if you forgot what she said. So it, you know, the, the thing that, when I think about who you are, it's like you took your passion and your expertise, your your years of media, because that's really what you did, mm-hmm. and created this platform that women can talk about this whole notion of support and how they found the help they needed. So, so, and I know for you at the beginning, it just didn't click. Like, yes, I'm going to do this when I leave. Right. Thank you for saying. I was just about <laughs> to say that because I want people to know it didn't just come like that. It started with this idea, this this desire, really yearning, mm-hmm. I will say, to talk to women like your. Yourself. Nicole was on an episode. I'm about to tell you what episode it was in a few minutes. But um, to, to talk to women, though, like yourself, not only about the success and how you achieved and all these things, but how did sh- support show up for you? Because it was something that I was trying to learn and manage. Nicole was on an episode mm-hmm. 446. <laughs> now, bankroll their brilliance and create some streams of income. But yes, mm-hmm. but uh, but it started with me interviewing my girlfriends. I contacted my friends who were entrepreneurs. You know, I had a lot of friends that have a lot of friends who were women entrepreneurs trying to figure it out. They weren't launching necessarily at the time. The multimillion dollar businesses are doing all these things. Yes, there are those women, too. But in the beginning, I'm like, I want to know the real struggle of whether it looks like entrepreneurship or just wanting to do your own thing or whatever that looks like stepping into your power. What is the real about it? And I started with my friends. And that was it. And then it took off from there. And I had one friend tell me, you have no idea how many women you're going to meet doing this. And I, I didn't have the vision. She had the vision. I was like, mm. really? You think so? And now it's like 500 something women later. But yeah. when you're starting something and you know this, Nicole, when you're first starting out, it's like, well, what is my intention? What do I really want to do? Mm-hmm. What is what is important to me? What matters to me right now? All those kind of self-reflective questions, I feel like right. before you get started and then start with one, what's the one thing you can do? Like the book, the one thing, right? What's the one thing Mm -hmm. you can do right now to get you started? You know, whether that's some research on something or talking Mm -hmm. to someone who's already doing it. Or for me, it was like, well, I'm going to start off interviewing my friends and see where this goes. And And now five years later. Yeah. So. And really what you did, and I want to repeat this because you took the media, the 20 years you had under your belt. Mm-hmm. And so the thing that I think is interesting and, and is the power in your pivot and many of us is, and even I worked in entertainment for years and I, I realized it on this end, but when I was leaving and God was telling me to do something else, I'm like, hold on, Lord, wait a minute. This has been the job I've dreamed of since I was seven. What do you mean? It's something time mm-hmm. to do something different. Now he didn't say it in those words, but I felt this inkling pulling me to something different and I couldn't understand because I loved my job. I did not like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And what I realize now is then I worked in talent development and casting. What do I do now? Talent development and casting. So what God was doing was expanding the territory of of my gift. And mm-hmm. I believe the same thing with you. You know, after working for major magazines, et cetera, 20 years. Yep. This podcast and even her book that's coming out is an expansion. So it's not the same thing, but yet it is. It's an expansion of it. 
And I think that's such a good point because I believe that's hardest. It's uh, more, usually when it's most difficult to do something different or to answer the mm-hmm. call, whatever that call is on your life, right? It's mm-hmm. like, well, I don't hate, I actually like my job. I'm going to good <laughs> parties and hanging out and doing all the, right. girl, I got the expense account, the car service and all these right. things at the time. It was good. I loved what I did and still right. love that kind of work. But it's just like, mm-hmm. but something's not, this isn't it though. There is more. And that can be a challenge for us to answer that and then be still and think about, what are the ways that God is trying to, as you said, I love this, expand my territory? Yeah. Am I being fearful by just staying in this position? Because one, it feels good to me and then it looks good to everybody else, right? We're going to stop here and take a quick commercial break and we'll be back for more. Have you heard the news? Once a year, I host a free five week online business school called The Brilliant School. In the course of five weeks, I'm walking you through the blueprint I've used to grow my own business into multiple six figures. Plus, I've used to coach other women to do the same. If you're looking to start or grow your business, you don't want to miss this as I'm giving you everything you need to bankroll your brilliance. Learn more and join us at thebrilliantschool.com. Look, and, and like you said, look, my very, I remember after I had already decided to leave, I was working mm-hmm. on a television show and I worked in casting, but the wardrobe department said, hey, Nicole, can you do me a favor? I love how you dress. Now, this had nothing to do with my job, but I know this was the enemy trying to tempt me. She said, can you do me a favor? Can you go shop? And it was a character that was my same size in the TV show I worked for. She said, can you do me a favor? My so-and-so is sick. Do you mind going and mm-hmm. doing stu- shopping for me today? And and those of you that know me, like I think you know me, y'all know I love to shop. And so, and the head of wardrobe knew me. So she was like, girl, do you mind? I said, not at all. She gave me her studio pass to Neiman Marcus. I didn't know what that meant, by the way. I get to Neiman Marcus with this little badge on. Girl, they walk me to this private room. They give me a glass of champagne. I'm like, I know this is the enemy trying to keep me here. Because this right here, I could do every day. Girl, I'm sitting with a glass of champagne. Mm-hmm. They bring it close to me. I was like, oh, Lord, it's going to be hard to walk away from all of this. And literally, I want you guys to understand that that, listen, I've had full circle moments in this role doing things not exactly like that. I'm sure I'm getting back to that. I'm not exactly there yet, but I've had full circle moments. And Mm -hmm. so when you're obedient to the to the gift in you, which I believe when you were born to this world, God put that gift in you on purpose for purpose for you to do this thing in the world. So Elaine, if you didn't say yes, the support is sexy. Look at how many women wouldn't Mm -hmm. be looking for the support that we already needed we just wouldn't admit that we needed it that's right and like they say God has a bigger plan for you than you can ever imagine right and you can ever dream for yourself yeah but it's at those times for anyone who's listening you're in that sort of place where you have some kind of feeling you feel like there might be something else but you might even be scared to even explore it we're not saying go out jump ship right away do whatever you know you got to take care of yourself now ain't nobody don't be (laughs) going home telling your husband or your partner Nicole and Elaine told you just to quit your job and jump ship but exploring Mm -hmm. that some of us don't even allow ourselves to explore that and I think you're so right you just never you never know what's to come of it right right so if you had to give a woman this is so good if you had to give a woman I'm trying to stay focused y'all know I'm taking notes so I forget sometimes that I'm supposed to be hosting I become student and so when it's silent that means I'm like oh shoot I'm the host I gotta ask a question so if you had to give women three things they have to do to say yes to ask for help to find whatever the support is what would you tell her and and I want you guys as she's telling you this I want you to think about this in context of the support she's going to suggest or the three things you've got to do are going to literally help you move into your next level because we're not here for who you were before you started listening to this episode or any of the episodes this week this is about who you're growing into who you're becoming so what are those three things that you would tell her that she's got to do to get into this whole support lane? Well, I love that you use the word, word help. So if I can give four things, there'll be a bonus thing. I'll use the mm-hmm. word help to help us remember <laughs> how to ask, ah, ask for it. support, right? So H-E-L-P. Mm-hmm. So the H, when you're thinking about it, remember having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. Mm. Right. So again, you they, the whole thing about, of course, defining your all is something we all have to do for ourselves. There's that part of it. But just mm. having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. So as we said in the beginning, it's not about I did this by myself. I'm self-made. I'm all, it's a community. It's a team. How can you get support? The E mm. is making the empowered ask. A lot of times we just don't ask for the support, ask mm. or accept, as we said, but it's making mm-hmm. the empowered ask. So it's not about coming from a place of weakness. You're actually coming from a place of strength. I say you're not looking for a savior. You're looking for support. 
Ooh, and can I just tell a quick story on that? Because I feel like this is going to really help a woman, right? And we're going to come to the L and the PR, I promise you. So I had a client that worked for a Fortune 500 company, and she was coming to me to start a business alongside it. So she was stressed, like, all the time and, and had a big VP role and and, and obviously was going to add another layer of stress to herself. And and I remember she came to a call once just – she I could feel the overwhelm on the phone. And when I asked her what was happening, she was like, you could hear her kids all over the place in the background. And, and I'm not a mom, by the way, y'all. So, so, and I'm saying that because so many people think I can't coach a mom when I'm not a mom, but I could feel the stress, which is the stress as well. I'm not one. But anyway, so what happened in that moment is I said to her, how, what help could you get? And she was like, what do you mean? I said, it's 4 p.m. You're trying to work. Your kids are not having it. I could hear them in the background. <laughs> so when you hang the phone up with me, I already know you're not going to be able to get any work done. So my question to you is, well, how could you do this different? She was silent. I said, have you ever thought about hiring a nanny? Well, I can't. I said, who told you you can't do that? You have a high powered job. You come home every day. And I asked her a bunch of questions as I knew this. I said, you come home every day and you still have more work to do. Your kids are acting a complete fool behind you because they're seeking your attention. Mm-hmm. So what if you did this? What if you cooked on Sunday night with your kids for the whole week? So it'd be a full on mommy and me. And she was single, by the way, mommy and the kids moment. You, you then hire a nanny. They pick that nanny, picks the kids up from school, does the homework, feeds the food they cooked to, with you to them. By the time they finish all of that, it's 7 p.m. when you get home, meaning you can get your work done uninterrupted. You can give them a bath, read them a story so you can spend time with them. So you can get your stuff done and they, someone supports you as you can stop getting feeling overwhelmed. Mm hmm. I mean, just that needlepoint shift shifted everything for her. And to me, that was an empowered ask That's because right. that empowered her to be able to do the things that she wanted to do and start this other business that she was trying to do alongside it. That's right. And I think it's important, too, that you told her you gave her that permission of she. No, I can't. I can't do that. And sometimes we say we can't do it because what will people think if I get a nanny? I don't need a nanny. I can't do it by myself. Listen, get some help. Mm-hmm. Enough. Right. Right. You're killing yourself right. trying to prove something. Like, someone who, who don't even the, care. Nobody even cares. Right. That you get. And who wrote that book? Who and who wrote, wrote the book? should book? Right. I'm like, who wrote the should book? Exactly. I'm like, somebody, we need to burn that book. That's the right. shoulds. Oh, anyway. That's why I said okay. we're always shooting all over ourselves. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So the L is two things. Let go of the how and live the question. So living the mm. question is something that I got from Patricia Moreno, who is episode, I believe, 21 on the podcast. I never have favorites. I love everybody. Love Nicole. Love everybody. Everybody. But this is a <laughs> phrase that really freed me because I think mm-hmm. as ambitious women, women who want to do things like the woman you talked about, your, the client that you were working with, we come from a space of needing to have the answers, right? We don't, right. we get stuff done. We get the answers. This is how we do the things, make the money, manage the kids, love the husband, love the partner, all those things. But right. free yourself to allow yourself to live the question. I don't know the answer, but this is the question I'm living right now. Mm. And open yourself up to the ways it'll show up. So letting go of the how, if you don't know how that support is going to show up, she probably didn't know that you were going to tell her to hire a nanny, right? And it's just like, mm-hmm. I never thought of that. You just don't know. But sometimes we're yeah. so close trying to find the answer that we're afraid to live the question. Ooh, that's so good. Yes. And then the P is believing in the possibilities. Again, you don't know how it's going to show up. So just be open to it. Hey, this is the support I need right now. I want, you know, whatever it is, but I want my book to reach a million, I say a million women. So whether that means a million sold or a million people see me on some show, or I don't know how that's going to happen, but I believe in the possibilities, right? And just go forward Mm -hmm. with that intention and the possibilities. Because if you think, well, it's not going to happen for me, I'm going to ask, but it's not going to work. I'm going to ask. I know they're going to say no. Well, that's not mm. believing in the possibilities. So I that's would say so good. that's how to think about it. H-E-L-P, those four things. Mm. And I'm going to add a, another P to the P. I call it place the order. Yeah. Now, I want you guys to get this. And as you were sharing the L, I was thinking of this, but I'm like, oh, it actually works for the P. <laughs> so so, so I love this because, uh, and I, I talk to, to my clients about this all the time. It's the how that we get stuck. Mm-hmm. So anytime I'm cheating on a cheat day, Elaine, I, when I go to McDonald's, don't judge me. Nope. I still do go to McDonald's. No judgment. So. So, so so you could judge me just off after we hang up. So, so, so anyway, when I go to the window and I place my order for my filet of fish, I don't stop and ask, I wonder if they have, do you guys have fish today? Do you have the special sauce? Do you have the cheese or do you have the, I don't ask any of that. I just then go to the next window 
I'm not worried about how it's going to be made. I'm not. I just place the, the order. order. Mm-hmm. And so for so many people, if you don't place the order, just like you just put out and it's not out into the universe, you put it out and say, God, this is what I want. Right. Because why would I put it out to universe when I can put it out to the creator that made the universe? Come on, somebody. Mm-hmm. Right. So so literally you're opening up the possibilities when you place the order. Like, Lord, I want my book to reach a million women. You place the order. That's right. I don't know that's how, so whatever that looks Mm-mm. like. You might be like, that's great. I'll put you on a show that reaches 10 million people. Like you just, you don't, you cannot, who knows? Who knows? You just right. take the first step, having conversations with beautiful women like Nicole and just talking to other women who want to help me share this. That's what you do. You you right. take that first step, but you just, you don't yep. know how. And it's fun yep. not knowing how, but again, as, right. as ambitious, when we need to, what is the answer? Tell me what to do. I realize I'm that person. Tell me what to do so I can just do it and stop <laughs> thinking about it. It doesn't work like that. Right girl i'm laughing because i always say to god how is none of my business how, right? I'm like, how are you gonna do not, it lord that's right. it's none of my business but i have to say that because as a type a woman i'm still trying to figure it out and i keep going to call that's how right. is none of your business that's stop right. it that's stop right. it yeah and you might miss something because you're thinking it's going to happen <laughs> this way and this person over here is the answer or this person over Woo! there is the true plug like you just got to be open Mm. So with that, this has been such a yummy interview, but I would be remiss if I didn't say, how do they go and get over I Got It, her her book, her new book, yes. Get Over I Got It. Thank you. I actually go to getoverigotit.com, getoverigotit.com. Mm. And when you're there, we talked about having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. I have a worksheet that you can get. If you pre-order the book, send me your email, even, even if you just get on the email list anyway, I have some stuff coming up. If you do want to pre-order and get this free worksheet, it's 11 pages long, I believe, of how to define your all. Because that's the thing, too. I think all we kind of have this mm-hmm. whole image of what all has to look like. All is different. for Your all is different than my all is different than somebody else's all. So how do you so define good. that for yourself? So get over. Ooh. I got it. Dot com. So, y'all, if you don't know now that support is sexy, yeah. then you just I don't know what to tell you. So, Elaine, thank you for blazing the trail so that we all can ask for the help and support and undergirding that we need in this thing called life. I really do appreciate you. Thank you. And I appreciate you so much. And I'm so happy that you're doing this. You're just you're a force, but you're also such a great supporter of women who are really trying to just do something new in the world. So thank mm. you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Amplify Your Brilliance. Now, I want you to walk away from these sessions with value. So answer either one or all three of these questions. Number one, what was your greatest takeaway? Number two, what will you do different as a result of what you heard? See, you may have heard something you've already heard, or you may have learned something new. Either way, don't take the insight that was shared with you for granted. So commit to doing one thing different as a result of what you heard. Number three, what was confirmation for you? What did you hear that confirmed you're on the right path? See, I want you to take a moment and celebrate you. Too often in our journey, we focus on what we're not doing and we forget to celebrate what we are doing. So I want you to share with us something that showed you that you're on the right path. Now again, share. Share either answer number one, what was your greatest takeaway? Number two, what will you do different? Or number three, what was confirmation for you? And share it in our Facebook community. Go to thebrillianstribe.com and use the hashtag Amplify Your Brilliance. See, each experience we encourage, support, and celebrate as a community, it allows us to expand in possibility and wisdom, in encouragement and love. Now, we've invited you into this community to deepen our journey with being the answer somebody needs and being committed to your next level. So until the next time, be extraordinary, be unapologetic, be bodaciously you, go and amplify.